my name is Rafi Oeli. I'm the CEO of Urban Aeronautics. Uh, we're now at the premises of the company in Yavne, Israel. Behind me is our uh, one-ton prototype uh, that has made 200 flights so far and is in flight testing all the time. Cormoran is an internal rotor helicopter. Uh, instead of a large overhead rotor, it has its lift rotors inside the fuselage, uh, which is, uh, of course, very challenging, uh, especially if you want to achieve the same payload range as any other helicopter of this uh, uh, weight and size. This project came about more than a decade ago um, when I was trying to really develop a, a groundbreaking improvement in helicopter design. And there's one thing that nobody ever touched on a helicopter, which is the main rotor. Aeronautical technology uh, has developed in the last 50 years to the extent where it's possible today to design a useful internal rotor aircraft. I've, I've always had the aviation bug since I was a, a, a kid. I went to study aeronautical engineering. Uh, I went to work for Israel Aerospace Industry. Uh, I was lucky to work in a very, very central place of IAI that really designed the first UAV in the world that went into service in Israel. The line of business jets of II and, and fighter aircraft. Over the years, I also spent two years at Boeing in Seattle working uh, uh, as part of a, uh, an engineer exchange program. I then left II, went and did my master's and PhD, uh, and then set up a small company, uh, which again developed uh, quite novel uh, configurations, aerodynamic solutions, uh, many vertical takeoff and landing, maybe many helicopter applications, including uh, modifying MD500s into unmanned helicopters and, and, and various other, uh, other projects. I've been involved with uh, vertical takeoff and landing uh, almost all of my career. I've always, uh, I was always interested in helicopter, in helicopters. Uh, I started flying helicopters, owning helicopters, and. Uh, uh, quite a few years before I established this company, in a previous company of mine, we actually developed a replica of the Hiller uh, flying platform, uh, which was a one-man uh, platform we called Hummingbird. It was uh, designed to be uh, sold as a kit. Um, we almost went into production and didn't do so just for liability reasons, but we had the kit ready, we had the aircraft ready. And uh, this really started my wish to go and move further. And the next program, the next project that I had in mind was to combine two single man flying platforms like the Hiller and make it into a flying car, which uh, I also set in in 2003 and flew that with a uh, fly-by-wire flight control because there was no possibility for weight shift control anymore. And uh, this was still very rudimentary. Uh, but then we went to the wind tunnel, started seeing the problems with ducted fans and solving them. And soon thereafter, uh, we came to all of the solutions uh, that hindered early ducted fans, including the VZ-1 platform, a man platform, and the VZ-8 Paseki Air Jeep, and came up with the solutions, with aerodynamic and flight control solutions that enable the vehicle that you see today. My history with the AHS uh, dates back to the first days of, of the company, starting off with a manned aircraft called X-Hawk. Uh, this manned aircraft was supposed to be a 12-seat large fan craft with two big fans. Everything went very nicely and, and uh, we also worked in the US with, uh, with Bell and Penn State University and the Office of Naval Research. We had, we had a few very, very interesting, very productive years. But in 2007, um, uh, people from all around the world, uh, the IDF in Israel, the US Marines and, and others in Europe told us that uh, about the urgent need to ferry uh, cargo into any point in the battlefield. And they, they said, you know, if you could take this technology uh, and apply it to a smaller aircraft that could just uh, uh, bring cargo, a thousand pounds of cargo, 
uh, ferry out two wounded and just land in any street or any spot, uh, this would be tremendous. In parallel to the wind tunnels, we also flew small-scale models that were fully instrumented and really had all the functionality of the large aircraft just to check the flight control and check everything in the fly-by-wire to make sure we don't have an error anywhere. So basically, uh, we found the same things that, that were found in the 60s, uh, uh, which shelved uh, most of the vehicles or all of the vehicles of, of that era. But then we had to look more carefully at, at the ducts, at the, at the fuselage, at the interaction between the rotor and the fuselage, uh, make some aerodynamic changes, uh, make some flight control adjustments and so on. And out of that, uh, and a decade of R&D evolved a field that we call fancraft, uh, which is uh, a, an aircraft where the lift rotors and the fuselage are highly integrated. In terms of the control, uh, this aircraft uh, is, is also unique in the fact that it has uh, control in all six degrees of freedom independent of each other. Uh, it does so uh, using, first of all, variable pitch on the rotors themselves, which uh, gives us uh, pitch and, and, and heave uh, control. Uh, in, in yaw and roll, we use a, a set of control vanes inside the ducts. In addition to that, we have found that with a very moderate tilt of the aircraft of uh, just a few degrees, uh, and proper shaping of the fuselage and modulating of the flow between the front and rear rotor, we can get a lot of forward thrust. And then you discover that you can get to 100 knots uh, actually without thrusters, and, and that's tremendous. It's important for de-icing, it's important for simplicity and for weight. Uh, so this whole machine works in harmony. After that, we went to the full-scale test. So the first years really were done developing uh, the hover capability, ta automatic takeoff and landing, um, through ground effect, uh, with ducted fans, with v very, very groundbreaking in itself. Um, then we went to a l very long tether on a wire that was on the ground, suspended between two, uh, two weights, and this enabled us to fly back and forth on the runway, still tethered, and we developed all the algorithms on turning and stand, you know, hover turn and everything, flying in winds. And in December 2015, actually two years ago, we did our first ever uh, free flight uh, in an airfield in the north of the country. Um, we've done uh, uh, a few dozen flights and now we're doing uh, full pattern, aut autonomous pattern flights, uh, hands off. Uh, from takeoff until till landing, uh, with a lot of investment in the avionics, in the fly-by-wire, in the computers, uh, adding sensors, and so on. So this this has been the main main focus. So the main incentive for um, investing all this time and money was to try and design and construct a helicopter that would have the same payload range. Uh, as a Bell 206, for example, but uh, without the overhead rotor and certainly without the tail rotor. We have managed to achieve uh, those goals. So the military aspect was very clear in written requirements and, and mission statements. Uh, what was not clear at that time is the air taxi market and the medevac market for a manned variant, which we're just getting into now. Uh, which is even more exciting than the unmanned variant.